This is Twit. I had not actually heard of Rebel, uh, but apparently it's 212,000 accounts strong. So, first of all, I'm assuming, and actually I know this from your article, but for everyone that's watching, uh, <laughs> you were a Pebble user. What was your experience mm -hmm. like uh, with the device? Um, well, I had a, uh, I've had the original Pebble, the Pebble Steel, the Pebble Time Steel, currently oh. wearing. Um, and, uh, I had a pebble two for a brief period. I think even a time round at one moment, I was a super fan. Let's just cut it short. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Did you, did you participate in the very initial Kickstarter campaign? Like where you, I like, did from the beginning, you were an OG. Right I, on. I was, and I, I got one and it broke on me in like three days <laughs> and I had to return it. And at the time I was a freelance writer and I wrote an article for fast company about that experience. And I was kind of, uh, putting my flag in the sand and saying, you know, hey, all these Kickstarters guys, I don't know if they're really going to work out that great. But <laughs> they um, the company, like as pointed out in the article, they just were dedicated to iterating and getting better and better. So over time, I became uh, a steadfast fan. And really, you know, they were ahead of, of it, Pebble was ahead of its time as far as smartwatches were concerned. So, yeah. uh, it was after the Pebble that the Apple Watch kind of came out and, and started to dominate things. And Google had its own wear, wearable OS and everything like that. So I'm not at all surprised that that Pebble owners, you know, are still avidly clutching their Pebble devices and wanting them to continue working. So maybe set the stage for um, how the closure of Pebble, how the end of Pebble support and all that led to this thing called Rebel. Sure thing. Um, well, uh, I got to say that uh, Pebble had always had a really open environment for developers, and they uh, they did everything they could to help anyone who wanted to develop for the devices, learn more about them. You know, they were they were pretty open as compared to say Android Wear or Apple Watches, which just kind of have like APIs for developers, right? You know, here's how to make an app for us. Here's whatever. Uh, Pebble encouraged. Uh, people to get involved and to take part in hackathons and things like that. So when the pebbles died, uh, you know, rather than just kind of say, oh, well, that stinks. Like, you know, what what can we possibly do? Uh, the community that had built around it already, the the pebble, uh, well, it was a discord server at times, there was a wiki, they just jumped in and they said, okay, what can we save from this thing? You know, how can we uh, how, how can we make sure that people can still make apps for it? How can we keep things running? And it just, you can read about it in the article, but it's just kind of this marathon sprint to capture everything they could from the company, from the app store, from the developer tools. And from that was born uh, Rebel, which is a great name. <laughs> and yes. uh, is basically, yeah, it was an attempt to see like, can we do this? Can we keep this thing running? And uh, I think if you compare that to most other internet connected devices, you know, most of the time the answer is like, maybe, <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, but they were able to, and also they had the help from a former Pebble developer who uh, just happened to be kind of on this like between jobs, uh, <laughs> maybe unintentional sabbatical. So they, uh, you know, in short order, they had everything up running again, the web services uh, that they needed to connect Pebbles to the web, uh, the app store, everything else. And uh, it's been remarkable in that I've been running Rebel since I, I was able to buy it, and uh, it, your your watch just works still, you know. And and what that does for the fans of Pebble is it gives them back the watch that they always liked, which was not an Apple Watch, not an Android Wear. It, it's a minimal device that shows you when someone texts you, that shows you that you've got a, you know an appointment coming up, and then it just goes back to showing you the time, <laughs> which, as as pointed out and uh, by many people, this is something that Apple Watch has just developed the ability to always show you the time all day. Right. Now on its fifth generation, they've nailed it. <laughs> they finally got there. Yeah, they they got their rights. Yeah, so you know, not it's not a hundred percent, but it is as is remarkably close. And considering what happens to most devices when their company gets bought, acquired, and shut down. It's I, I think it's a remarkable success story, and it's due to the ing ingenuity of the uh, Rebel team, and also, though, I think due to the company, which did everything it could when it was shutting down to make sure that uh, this could happen. They kind of set yeah, the stage true. for this kind of renaissance. Uh, so one of the things that I have uh, you know read in this in this piece on iFixit is that iFixit is looking to assist in in making uh, all of this even more of, uh, or at least like a successful reality uh, and continue. So what is, what are we looking at here? Like my my poor generation one Pebble whose battery yeah. doesn't work anymore. Am I going to be able to get a battery from iFixit? Resurrected. We are, we just got some word today about 
some components of certain pebbles and mm -hmm. we'll be happy to tell you about them very soon once we <laughs> you know cleared the cleared the way for those um right. yeah and you know i fix it is a repair guide for devices and we have some um repair guides and teardowns that we have posted we've done a few devices but then also the community has helped out with a few um i think the what we're going to do from here is try to encourage and maybe even kind of seed ourselves more repair guides for these devices. And also, yeah, we're, we're looking to see what we can do to source the parts. Um, it's a little trickier because Pebble was a you know, relatively small company mm -hmm. um, that was kind of making its own contracts with manufacturers as it went. <laughs> so yeah. sourcing those parts is not necessarily easy, but we have been able to find some. I'll just say that much. And uh, we're working on getting them out there available to people as soon as possible. Yeah, I, I should also say full disclosure. I fix it is a sponsor on the Twit Network. Yeah. Uh, this, this, of course, this interview has nothing to do with that sponsorship. This was just an article that I came across, and and ba you know, touching on on your point, like I'm not used to seeing these technology releases that happen and then they fold and then uh, suddenly they're resurrected, or like you said, that the company was so kind of forward thinking that they allowed for something, this like resurrection right. to happen. I think that's really respectable. Mm -hmm. So when people sign up for a rebel account, what do they get exactly? They get the servers on the other side uh, that are, that are powering the smarts of their, their pebble to keep it lit up. What else do they get? Sure. There's two levels. If you get a free account, you basically get your watch back. Um, you, the app store comes back, the, oh, okay. um, the basic, you know, ability to check in at home and, you know, and, and connect to your smartphone app and send messages back and forth. That's free. That just resurrects the, the core functionality of your phone and, and the app store. Um, if you want to pay for services, there are two things or three things actually that are um, a little bit more tricky. Uh, voice dictation, which was available on some later models for responding to text messages or doing things like that. Um, and then... Uh, Sorry, uh, weather, uh, weather, which you think is free from the government, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you know, you think it is, but it's actually like, there's a lot of expensive APIs and the way that they have to be uh, handled. And so, uh, weather, which is of course a very cool thing to have on your watch. Uh, you get that for essentially $3 a month. If you sign up for a rebel account, uh, paid, and then you are also and they're open about it. You're also subsidizing the whole project by, uh, opening up your wallet. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's really. And great. with that, with that little bit of extra money that they're from their paying subscribers, as you, you can read about in the article, there is a very interesting future they're working on, maybe involving like new slash side loaded hardware. It's it's super exciting. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I so by having uh, the the software available or the firmware available, then you could, in theory, install it on any hardware that would work with it. So you would have a Pebble, but maybe this is made by another uh, another company is that the idea or is this like folks want to resurrect pebble hardware and the firmware mm. is going to be available there or is it both? i think more i think it's more likely the for the former than the latter um I, I don't know how you could look at a company that had a hard time competing in the smartwatch market and say i want to manufacture these devices <laughs> <laughs> I, I i want to take on that debt um but yeah uh pebble the the firmware of it is that it's a very core level based on a MIT project called like Free RTOS, which is like Android, is based on a open kernel that you know other people can use too. So um, this this open source firmware could work on a lot of different tiny devices, which is what it's made to do. So the Rebel community is always keeping its eye on every new watch that comes out um, and just looking at it from a side, and being like, could this be? Not yet. <laughs> so, uh, I, the the Pine sixty four community just is yeah. about to release a, a new Linuxy watch that goes along with the Pine phone, and they're like, "Ooh, an open source watch!" But like, we'll see. The, the, it, you, they got to find just the right device to ghost it to and and make the new Pebble. But that's you know t TBD. It's yeah. it's interesting to watch from the side. Absolutely. I think what I love about this more than anything is it really feels like a like the uh, the, 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 one of the pinnacle examples of how you go from where I feel like we are. And I know this is a big effort with iFixit around educating around, uh, e-waste, you know, electronic waste and how we buy all of these devices. And then what happens when they die? Like most of the time mm -hmm. they end up in a landfill or, you know, hopefully they get pulled apart and recycled or whatever. But, um, but here, here is a perfect example of old technology that very well could have died, but instead 
instead a community built up around it and keeps it going. And so it's perfectly usable. It proves day after day that this technology is actually still usable just because the people that created it decided or, or you know, had to shut it down for whatever their reasons were doesn't mean that that ends up in a landfill automatically. Right. You can actually use it. Somebody has a use for it. And I think that's really a valuable lesson right now in technology. More companies need to have that thought in mind. I agree. Yeah, plan, <laughs> just generally planning for an afterlife here device, which yeah. uh, I, I emailed very briefly with uh, Eric Migakowski, who founded Pebble. And he said, basically, I mean, he didn't say like, oh, yeah, this was my master plan all along, <laughs> to, <laughs> you know, right. run out of company, get acquired, uh, you know, have to let people go. No, but he did say that, you know, from the start, they had always thought about um, kind of fail safes, like, well, what could, what would we do if our servers ever went down or, you know, what, what would yeah. happen if all of a sudden, you know, so that kind of planning for an afterlife for, for not including a kill switch in your device is, it sounds basic, but it's something that Pebble did that so few companies do. Um, just searching for comparisons uh, on this article, just typing kill switch IOT device into Google is really sad. Yeah. <laughs> just full of people angry at like their, you know, their smart home hub, their personal cloud server, their chumby that just like died uh, because chumby. all of a sudden the company didn't exist. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, plenty of examples there.